गुड इवनिंग माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड फ्रेंड्स माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर रविकांत पाठक एंड आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट योर वीडियो लेक्चर क्लास इन द लास्ट वीडियो लेक्चर वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द एलिमेंट्री कैनाल वी हैव स्टार्टेड यू नो वेरी वेल सो आई हैव स्टार्टेड द चैप्टर एंड द नेम ऑफ चैप्टर इज द डाइजेशन एंड एब्जॉर्बशन सो इन दिस चैप्टर वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द एलिमेंट्री कैनाल एंड द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द डाइजेशन एंड द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द डाइजेशन so now we will talk in this chapter remaining portion of this uh, chapter so you can say digestive glands so today what we will talk we will talk about the digestive glands okay and uh, when we have started that this chapter so that time we have seen one statement and that statements have given digestive system includes two things alimentary canal and digestive glands means digestive gland that is associated glands you can say digestive so now we will talk about the we will talk today about the detail of digestive glands okay so what is the digestive gland if you read so what you will get so here they have in the digestive glands okay the digestive glands associated with the alimentary canal we already told so uh, digestive glands associated with the alimentary canal and it includes it includes the first one is the salivary gland second is the liver third is the pancreas fourth is the gastric gland and fifth is the intestinal gland it if means it if we'll check so how many glands we will discuss we will talk about the five different glands first is the salivary gland second is the liver third is the pancreas fourth one gastric glands and fifth is the intestinal gland so these five five fifth the different glands we will discuss one by one first of all we are going to discuss about the salivary gland so salivary gland salivary glands they secretes if you check the number of salivary glands so they present in the three in pair okay these are present in the three in pair of number you can say six six glands found so one pair one pair parotid glands this is the largest gland largest salivary gland you can say this is the parotid which is found near to the cheek second one is the submaxillary or submandibular that is found in near lower to jaw okay and third so third last pair which is known as the sublingual below the tongue it is found below the tongue okay so you know very well this salivary glands involves in the secretion of the saliva saliva that secretes enzyme which is known as the salivary amylase this salivary amylase also known as the tylin okay and what is the function of this salivary amylase it involves in the digestion of polysaccharide that is the starch small polysaccharide starch molecules converted into the disaccharide maltose okay starch molecules converted into the disaccharide in the presence of you can say in the presence of the enzyme tylin or salivary amylase so this salivary amylase and tylin involves in the conversion of starch molecule into maltose okay so this is the basic function of the tylin or salivary amylase enzyme known as the lysozyme and you know very well what is the lysozyme so lysozyme you can say this is the enzyme which involves in the this is also called the antibacterial enzyme why we called antibacterial enzyme because it involves in the destruction of the bacterial cell wall how it act how it act you know very well so bacterial cell wall is generally made up of bacterial cell wall is generally made up of the mucopeptide or peptidoglycan and mucopeptide or peptidoglycan they have the two composition nam and nac nam and nac so that means n acetyl muramic acid and acetyl glucosamine and both are linked by both are linked by the beta 14 linkage clear so these beta 14 linkage generally break by the lysozyme break by the lysozyme and if the uh, cell wall breaks so bacteria they are unable to survive in this mechanism generally lysozyme act okay so here you can say that means this uh, salivary amylase involves in the digestion of starch molecules which is the polysaccharide and these starch molecules converted into the disaccharide maltose and another enzyme lysozyme this lysozyme act as, act as antibacterial enzyme and these uh, how act because i had already told it involves it breaks the formation of bond between nam and nac and nam and nac both involves formation of the bond that is beta 14 linkage generally formed beta 14 glycosidic linkage so this breaked by the lysozyme 
so this is the mechanism of the lysozyme enzyme okay next one you can say second one we already studied first one finish that is salivary gland second one is the liver if we'll check the liver so liver is the largest gland if we are talking about the largest so we will uh, focus some some points of the largest in our body so largest gland is the liver largest exocrine gland so liver is the largest exocrine gland largest endocrine gland is the thyroid largest endocrine gland is the thyroid largest exocrine glands is the liver and largest skin largest organ in our body is known as the skin okay largest cell in our body is considered as a ovum smallest cell in our body considered as a sperm longest cell in our body considered as a neurons okay so these things only we have already uh, discussed okay and uh, now uh, i am telling okay because they have given the largest okay so here this liver liver is the largest gland and their weight their weight is 1.2 to 1.5 kg means 1.2 to 1.5 kg they have their weight in adult human okay and if you we'll see the this liver so this liver have the two different lobe right and left lobe okay we'll check so this liver have the two different lobe one lobe is called the right and another is the left and you know very well so right right lobes always bigger right lobes of the liver always bigger means large in size okay and uh, these uh, liver so these liver they have also provided if you see so they are the uh, unit unit means you can say they are uh, the hepatic hepatic lobules are considered as a structural and functional units of the liver so hepatic lobules are considered as a structural and functional unit of the liver and why why they have the contain hepatic cell and these arrange forms a cord okay so they have the hepatocytes or hepatic cells which forms a cord like structure and each lobule each lobule is the covered by a thin connective tissue they are covered by a fibrous thin connective tissue see and this is called the glissans capsule clear this structure is known as the glissans capsule and you know very well so this liver is also considered as the strongest organ because when if you have ate any substance if you have any any substance toxic poison everything they generally uh, detoxify by the liver so here and uh, one thing also you know very well some terms related to the uh, liver so glycogenesis glycogenesis and uh, uh, glycogenolysis and you can say glycogenesis glycogenolysis and glycolysis and gluconeogenesis so four different terms here they have given so first is the glycogenolysis second is the gluconeogenesis third is the glycolysis and fourth one is the glycogenesis so if you'll check so these things these things only perform in the liver okay glycogenesis what is the glycogenesis glycogenesis means the formation of glycogen molecules from the glucose and why glycogen because you know glycogen is also considered as a storage food material of the our body okay so glycogen that means conversion of glycogenesis means conversion of the glucose molecule into the glycogen how it happened how it happened it generally happened by the you know hormone so hormone one is known as the insulin and when blood glucose level increases in your blood so that time insulin become activate and it involves in the conversion of glucose molecules into the glycogen means insulin always favors insulin always favor the glycogenesis and just inverse just inverse another hormone which is known as the glucagon glucagon favors the glycogenolysis because glucagon when act when the glucose level falls in the blood so that time glucagon act and they enhance the phenomenon which is known as the glycogenolysis glycogenolysis means conversion of the glyco means breakdown of the glycogen molecules into the glucose okay and when glucose molecules forms so then blood level blood glucose level increase and they maintain okay so it means glycogenesis enhanced by the insulin and glycogenolysis enhanced by the glucagon okay glycolysis you know very well you already studied in the respiration in plants chapter so glycolysis the conversion of glucose molecules into the pyruvic acid in absence of oxygen molecules this is known as the glycolysis okay and one other one is the gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis means the formation of glucose molecules 
rather than carbohydrate molecules okay so this is known as the gluconeogenesis okay so these things uh, because these things were happening these things happened inside the liver okay so due to this uh, i have explained it okay and sometimes muscles also involves you know furai cycles which is also found in the muscles okay now in the figure in the figure you can see here they have given the uh, different types of the if you see this is the uh, you can say this is the intestine and intestine they have the villus villus i had already told that means uh, projection projection in the intestine so this is called the villus and crypts crypts means this is the cavity it means you can say cavity like structure which is known as the crypts okay and sometimes this is also called the crypts of the loop lysozyme okay and here this villi this villi provided with the artery and vein and they have also one things which is known as the lacteals and lacteals is the large large vessels or lymph uh, that means lymph lymph vessels this is the large lymph vessels okay next one you can see here the stomach because they have given the figure so we will also talk about the detail but you should to know figure here they have given so you, due to this i am discussing here they have given the stomach you know stomachs they have the g cell g stands for gastrin so g stands for g cells means gastrin cells so this involves in the region of the release of the gastric hormone and these gastrin hormones involves in the uh, peptic that means chief cells they also involves uh, activate and gastrin hormones okay here you can say mucus neck cell they have the mucus neck cells neck cells which involves in the secretion of mucus and parietal cells or adjunctive cells which involves in the secretion of hcl and intrinsic factor and chief cells are peptic cells which involves in the secretion of pepsin enzyme okay so these gastrin uh, stimulates to the this uh, stomach to release of the uh, peptic cells from the chief cells as well as duodenum it, it is also found in the duodenum which also enhance the activity of duodenum okay so now you can see this is the uh, they have we have talked about the uh, that means uh, intestinal gland as well as gastric gland so we are discussing here about the liver so liver you can see so the bile you know liver generally secretes one substance which is known as the bile and what is the feature of bile bile have no enzyme bile have the never if you read so what it have given the bile is secreted by the hepatic cell pass through the hepatic duct okay hepatic duct you know liver have the hepatic duct and near uh, near to liver they have also sac like structure which is known as the gall bladder and in the gall bladder 140 102 20 140 ml this can be stored the bile sac okay so here you will see so this uh, uh, bile duct so uh, bile duct this is you can say by uh, cystic duct and this is the hepatic duct okay so cystic duct and hepatic duct they will open into the common common bile duct okay and these common bile duct open into the duodenum okay and you know bile they have uh, bile salts and other substance why we are saying bile because they are related to the cholesterol they will check their main component is the cholesterol clear so due to this we are saying the bile if you see if you see the uh, sorry if you see the figure so here they have given the parotid glands which is the salivary gland so here parotid it is the largest gland near to the ear okay and then uh, then two different types of the glands that is submandibular and the sublingual okay now here they have given the liver structure so i had already told two different types of the lobes form right and left lobe so right is always larger in compared to the left and they have also arises so this is hepatic duct and this is cystic duct and this is the common duct okay now you can see pancreas so here they have given the pancreas this is the leaf like structure and pancreas you know very well this is considered as a heterocrine gland why we are saying heterocrine gland or uh, uh, heterocrine because they involves in the secretion sometimes it is also known as the mixocrine and it involves in the secretion of both enzyme as well as hormone so 95% 95 to 99 uh, sorry 95 to 97% it secretes the uh enzyme and only 3 to 5% generally secretes the hormone and this was firstly observed by the scientist langer hans they have given the term langer hans isolates of the langer hans clear so they have given the term isolates of langer hans if you see so their structure so their structure of the pancreas it appears like uh, it appears like leaf like okay 
and this pancreas also involves in the secretion of enzyme as well as hormone hormone insulin and glucagon so these two hormones are secreted by the pan pancreas and uh, you know very well so these liver as well as pancreas both will combine and they forms a duct both will combine and they will forms a duct that is known as the hepatopancreatic duct and these duct is guarded by or regulated by the one odi which is known as the sphincter of odi so that is called the sphincter of odi so if you will see here they have given if you will read this sentence so what it have given one by one we can see first of all so it have given the ducts and stored concentrated in the thin muscular sac means you are already seen so hepatic duct as well as cystic duct hepatic duct as well as cystic duct so cystic duct means this cystic duct arise from the muscular sac like structure muscular sac like structure which is known as the gall bladder okay and this gall bladder involves in the storage of the bile okay the duct of the gall bladder this is known as the cystic duct along with the hepatic ducts along with the hepatic ducts from the liver forms the common bile ducts it will form the common bile ducts here you can say this is the common this is the cystic ducts and this is the hepatic duct and they form the common bile duct okay and here you can say the bile duct and pancreatic duct open together the bile duct and pancreatic duct open together into duodenum as the common hepatopancreatic duct which is guarded by a sphincter of odi clear the sphincter muscle says that is the wall like wall like structure which involves in the regulation which involves in the regulation or guard, guarded by the sphincter of odi okay so if you'll see so what it have given uh, here so in the figure you can easily understand if you'll see the figure with the figure you can easily understand so here they have the this means liver and they have the uh, hepatic duct so this is the hepatic duct if, uh, it will go right side that is right hepatic duct left side left hepatic duct after then it will uh, increase it will uh, you here you know you, this is the sac like structure which is known as the gall bladder okay and gall bladder they have the uh, you know they have no enzyme so gall bladder only they have the bile cells and you know very well so bile cells involves in the changes of the ph of the food because ph when food present in the stomach so that time their ph is the very low but when it will come into the duodenum so this bile mixed and involves provide the slightly alkaline alkaline ph okay and if we'll check so this are the duodenum u shaped structure of the duodenum and here uh, this is the hepato this is the hepatic duct and here pancreatic duct and they form the hepatopancreatic ducts and here they are the guarded they are guarded by the sphincter of odi so here you can say this figure showing the sphincter of odi so in the figure you can easily understand this is the figure very is very simply explaining you can see here this is the right hepatic duct this is the left hepatic duct and this is the liver so we i had already told so liver right right uh, lobe is the larger right lobe is the big okay and then this is the cystic ducts this is the cystic ducts and this is the common hepatic ducts and both will combine they form the common bile duct okay and they further combine with the pancreas they form the hepatopancreatic duct okay and ultimately where it will open it will open into the u shaped duodenum okay and here so gall bladder they have also the gall stones okay clear uh that means they have given the bbc bbc is the uh, channel my channel name bio boost classes so you can uh, uh, subscribe and share okay next uh, next one here uh, what it have given uh okay so next uh, we have discussed two first is the salivary gland second is the liver and third we are going to discuss about the pancreas okay and pancreas some little bit uh, uh, i have already told so here pancreas you know that means it is a compound both what is saying it is saying compound and both exo exocrine as well as endocrine that i already told them this is uh, means you can say pancreas is also considered as a heterocrine gland or mixocrine glands why heterocrine because it involves in the secretion of both enzyme as well as hormones okay so here the pancreas is a compound both exocrine and endocrine elongated organ this is the exocrine as well as endocrine elongated organ situated between the limbs of u shaped duodenum okay it's situated between the limbs of 
you shaved it in dinner and i had already told isolates of langer hans involves in the secretion because they have the alpha beta gamma and delta cells okay so alpha beta beta cell secretes the insulin and alpha cell secretes the glucagon hormone okay and these hormones involves in the uh, regulation of the glucose uh, molecules i had already discussed in the in case of the liver about the detail of function of insulin as well as glucagon hormone okay the exocrine portion secretes the alkaline pancreatic juice and uh, you know if you uh, you should to know in case of the duodenum so there is the complete digestion takes place if you see in the mouth only carbohydrate digest in case of the stomach only protein digest little bit lipase also secretes but mostly protein digestion takes place but in case of the duodenum duodenum everything is digest means protein carbohydrate nucleic acid and everything digests so due to this complete digestion where it takes place complete digestion takes place inside the duodenum clear so here they are again exocrine exocrine portion secretes alkaline pancreatic juice containing containing enzymes and endocrine portion secretes hormone insulin and glucagon so this is the function of the pancreas okay now fourth fourth one is the g g uh, that means uh, gastric glands or you can say uh, stomach okay stomach that means gastric glands and one thing also you should to know they are not given in your uh, ncert so ghrelin hormone ghrelin hormone which is also known as the hunger hormone okay and it involves in the in it involves increasing the appetite okay and just in in uh, contrast of the ghrelin hormone one hormone which is known as the leptin a leptin jelly act inverse of the ghrelin okay ghrelin increases appetite leptin decreases appetite okay so that means which is found in the this is jelly released from the stomach okay so now here you can see next one so next one is the stomach okay and i had already told so this stomach have the three different types of the cells oxyntic cells or parietal cells or delomorphous cells and another is the cheap cells or peptic cells and one more also uh, mucus cells or uh, goblet cells which involves in the secretion of the mucus if you'll see this uh, this uh, uh, flow chart means uh, this uh, tabular form you can easily understand okay here first of all oxyntic cells are parietal cells this is also called delomorphous cells this involves in the secretion of hcl and intrinsic factor okay and this intrinsic factor is in uh, essential for the absorption of the vitamin b12 vitamin b12 also known as the cyanocobalamin okay next one is the chief cells chief cells are zymogen cells they have given the chief cells are zymogen cells this involves in the secretion of enzyme like pepsin renin and lipase and in the last video lecture we have already discussed about the renin and lipase okay and uh, if we have not discussed so i it will come i will discuss clear so renin generally secretes in the infants infants and it involves in the digestion of uh, milk protein okay milk protein casein converted into the calcium paracasinate so we will also talk later during the digestion of the food okay next one is the mucus cells mucus cells involved in the secretion of the mucus and you know very well why secretion of the mucus takes place because in the acidic condition uh, stomach involves in the digestion of every substance why stomach is not digested because stomach cells so stomach layer they secretes this mucus cell secretes the mucus and acidic and basic so acidic and basic they will mix with each other and cause the neutral neutral condition so due to this our stomach not get digested okay our stomach not get digested because due to the secretion of this mucus substances okay next and last that is the fifth gland which is known as the intestinal glands clear next and last which is known as the fifth glands are uh, last glands which is known as the here you can say uh, wait uh, yes so here you can say intestinal glands uh, and these intestinal gland is the simpler tubular glands and found throughout the small intestine okay where it found it is found through the throughout the small intestine and these named as a crypts of the lubercoon and glands of the bruner okay so simply you can say bruner gland and you know very well so bruner gland these bruner glands have the panet cell panet cell and these panet cell is involves in the secretion of lysozyme enzyme okay antibacterial enzyme that is you can say lysozyme enzyme so now uh, we have discussed five different types of the glands 
uh, very shortly and uh, this is the very important in your neat uh, aspects of the neat exam so you should to learn uh, thoroughly and uh, try to understand uh, very sharply okay so now we are going to finish your class and uh, thank you for your patience and cooperation and i am expecting with you so everyone uh, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for regular regular updates so thank you